Hey you beauts, welcome back, welcome back. Today we have a different style video. So I'm going to try and do the video and also do my makeup. So let's see how this goes. I have a mirror like this way, so I'm gonna be looking that way, but you know what? Why not shake it up a bit, right? All right. So I'm really excited about this one, you guys. And today we're gonna be talking about the importance and power in Thanksgiving and expectation. So why I'm making this video is because this is a recent and growing revelation that I've been getting through many different avenues. And this is the first time where over like a good period of time many different sources have like been coming at me saying the same thing when I wasn't looking for an answer so it's just like obviously a revelation that I needed to grow so I am basing this conversation off of a base knowledge through a video by Kevin L.A. Ewing, which I will obviously link below, called The Law of Expectation. And you know, my goal is ultimately to become really familiar with all the spiritual laws and in conjunction with my relationship with God, with the power of the Holy Spirit, just overcome and succeed in life and just live a good life even though the devil reigns down here to some extent. So this is also based on something that God told me at the end of my last fast that I did, a dream I had last night, and ultimately me continuing to struggle in these cycles of heaviness and depression where, um, you know, I do think that it's like, this might be TMI to some people, I don't know, but it might be linked somewhat to my cycle. However, nobody has time for that every month. So I'm just, you know, we're, we're overcoming this. And I would get into these cycles of um, not super extremes, but, you know, being really productive and spiritually just being on top of my game, like checking all the boxes, you know, praying, a certain amount of time, you know, feeding my spirit and how I do that personally is um, praying out loud, speaking in tongues, and also just getting in my Bible, you know, just really being on it. And all of my house, you know, stays clean and my, you know, I'm really productive at work, you know, whatever, whatever. But then I would hit a cycle of just being heavy and just feeling like, and literally actually sleeping for so long, like just fatigue and kind of a cold. Do you see how I'm still getting over it? Like I would get a little bit sick. So yeah, the devil has like, he takes a little bit once I get myself really up and going. And I think that that's because I was missing a revelation. So he was letting me think that I got it down, letting me get to a point and then yanking his little leash back and I would just fall and just be like, you know, in that same mental cycle. So that's why I'm making this video. That was probably a lot too much, but it's okay. It's okay. So <laughs> um, there's gonna be a lot of information in here. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to order it correctly, okay? So first I'm gonna start with what God told me um, at the end of my last fast. So a part of what I do when I fast is have a period of time during the day, ideally, ideally, where I sit there and I say, you know, okay God, what are you saying? What do you wanna to say to me? And yes, I could do this on a regular basis. However, um, I do think that I'm wired prophetically, so I'm like, more emotional i'm sensitive to spiritual things but at the end of the day at this point in my walk with my wiring i am definitely susceptible to the lies of the enemy honestly and so what i do especially if i have like 
if I feel like I want to give somebody a word or give somebody, you know, what God's heart is, I'll fast. Um, just to really make sure because I'm like, you know, don't want to, don't want the devil in any of that. So this was so sweet, y'all. So he, you know, I feel like he was really telling me that, you know, my name is Maggie, but so that really doesn't mean anything but the, the name Margaret, which technically is not my birth certificate, but you know, whatever, means pearl. And I always had this kind of thought in the back of my mind, like, what is, you know, what purpose was that? Because when I got saved, I heard that even though we are given our names by our parents, like God does name us. And I was wondering like what he named me, you know, but I asked him that a while ago and I never got the answer. But today, you know, or this day he gave me an answer. He goes, well, you know, this is how I felt like the Holy Spirit was, you know, speaking to me. He's like, I named you Pearl for a reason. When a merchant is in search for fine pearls and finds one, he gives everything for it. Just as the merchant gives everything for fine pearls, I gave everything for you. My life for your salvation. You are that precious to me, child. Hearing is not seeing and seeing is not doing. All play an important role in due season. Seek refuge in me. Revelation will come. Honestly, I thought, oh, that's really cute. You know, it warmed my spirit and I just moved on from there. I also forgot I was going to be doing my makeup. But, um, so that was really nice to hear. And, but I didn't really think farther into it. Um, I was kind of confused on the whole, like, hearing is not seeing and seeing is not doing. I was like, okay, you know, okay. Um, true. <laughs> and I think that line right there is where the basis of this revelation is going to come through here, boys. So then I am, um, I have this dream last night and this is kind of funny because in this dream, think of like, fairy tale land okay because this is where my dream really was it was very much like fairy tale like i was on this little adventure and on the adventure i had this like necklace and it's like something that i have in real life so while i was on this adventure i was like mm, i'm gonna go play on this like monkey bars or something i don't know it was like <laughs> it was like a swing set and so I asked somebody to um, please watch it or not even watch it, but I just gave it to them because I wanted to go play and I had these this jewelry with me. So I give it to this person and in the dream, I don't really know them, but for whatever reason, I'm just like, I give it to them because I don't know. So anyways, the point of it, I think at least, is that the dude that I gave it to, he like just left them somewhere. And I realized in the dream very quickly, like I had this revelation right off the bat, that okay, this guy has um, is struggling with some bitterness and jealousy. So he took my jewels and he just left them and he didn't take care of them. And the other people I was with in my dream were like really upset but for whatever reason, I wasn't. I was just like, it, literally my spirit man was just like, eh, okay. Um, well, God's going to do something with this. Like, I knew it in my spirit. Okay, God's going to do something with this. And he has a plan. So this adventure that I'm on, the end goal is to find this royal prince-like person. Like, Along on the adventure, I am learning, you know, how to ballroom dance and just do fancy things like, you know, etiquette and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, no, y'all, like, this is a whole, like, <laughs> fairy tale movie in my head. So, going along on the adventure and the kind of, like, the, the idea that I got was that 
okay, whatever bad stuff happens, such as that situation where that person like just left my jewelry, that's going to be all for the greater working of me um, meeting this dude, this like prince dude. And I literally knew in my dream, I was like, yeah, I have no idea how we're going to meet. He's not expecting me, you know, to come. But I knew that if I went to this one city, God would just make it happen. <laughs> I literally can't even like, you know, when I was writing this down, I was just hysterically laughing, shaking my head like, girl, what is going on? Um, so I was expecting and feeling thankful for what God was going to do, but hadn't done yet. And that was the theme. Like when I woke up, like the second I woke up, I literally thought like the importance and power and Thanksgiving and expectation, like that literally came to me. And I was like, oh, so it put into context like what was going on in the dream. Okay, so I hope that that wasn't too strange. Um, but if it was, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, welcome. So now, strange fairy tale situation the point of it though was that in my i think is that you know there are going to be good things that we have that um we're going to lose or that get taken away and it's just no big deal god's going to use it for the good of our story in the end and the key to getting to that destination is thanksgiving and expectation now, this video that I watched a few days ago was, and I cannot recommend it enough. I cannot recommend it enough. I know that the videos I'm recommending are both an hour long, but you guys just break it up and you will be blessed for it, okay? So it's by a channel called Now That We're a Family Podcast. And the title of the video is Victory Over Pornography. So for me personally, and praise the Lord, that is not my personal struggle. So as I mentioned before, it's this cycle of depression and heaviness. However, you know, giving into this, giving into what is not of God, aka sin, it just, you know, it is what it is. And we can't judge, you know, one's worse than the other, right? So whether that for you is anxiety, gluttony, you know, fornication, um, whatever it is for you, you know, it can 100% apply to your situation. So the person who runs the podcast or um, the husband of the couple that does is interviewing his father-in-law, Chad Johnson, about his struggles with um, pornography. And if I'm getting it right, he struggled from the ages of 15 to 34, you guys. And this guy is like just really an amazing dude in God. He's, you know, <clears throat> during the times when he was struggling, he was a Christian. He believed in the promises of God. It didn't even phase his faith in God if I, um, you know, interpreted it correctly. He to you know get out of these cycles he tried to um apply the word you know did bible studies did all these programs you know did accountability groups um and different forms of accountability there was so much this guy did like he did every single thing possible you guys and it wasn't working it wasn't working um the devil just kept coming in during his weak points, during his weak times, or, you know, right after he had a big win, right after something really good happened, or when he was in a low season, like, just, you know, he, the devil's just waiting for that perfect moment. Like, this thing has nothing better to do. So, the way that he got over this was gaining 
a deeper revelation and understanding about Romans 6. Time to pull out the Bibles, boys, okay? And y'all, when I'm listening to this, when I first clicked on this video, I'm like, why am I watching this? Like, you know, this is not my struggle personally. And I do love this podcast. I love the family that runs it. And like, just learning, you know, different Christian family values or whatever from these people. But I'm just like, why am I watching this? And then, bam, it hits my spirit, okay? So... This is the, this is one of the examples he gave. When you have a kid and you put them on a ledge of something, okay, and um, I might like be kind of fudging the example a little bit, but you all will get it. So you put a kid, he's on a ledge and you're like, you like jump, I'll catch you. And the kid is like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, help, like help me, help me, help me. And you're literally standing there and you're like, no, dude, I got you. Like, just jump. And they're like, no, 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 I'm scared. I'm scared. And the kid, like, he knows that you can do it, but he's still asking for help, right? And isn't accepting in himself that you will help him, you know, and not being like, oh, thanks, dad, for catching me and then falling. What he was doing was kind of cr making his own works in this struggle trying to pair that with God's power instead of being like I can't do this God this is all you this is all your grace that saved me this that your grace is the only thing that sustains me and you know my works what I do doesn't keep me free and it doesn't set me free so I'm sorry if that example was um, botched, but in the video, it's very clear. So I'm like, huh, interesting, interesting. So here's a few scriptures that I'm gonna read. Um, Romans 6, three, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Um, and I've known that when we get baptized, our flesh dies with Christ. Like I knew that, but when you just study Romans six and you get this revelation that we already have defeated any of the devil's tactics and plots and plans through the blood of Jesus, like there is, it's not like, you know, faith without works is dead. And none of these things that he was doing to help fight this um, and stay victorious over this addiction, like accountability and, you know, different types of support groups and Bible studies, it's not that that wasn't helpful, but without acknowledging that, you know, our flesh has already been dead, that was what was keeping him stuck. And then um, in verse 7, it says, this is from the ESV, by the way. For one who has died has been set free from sin. <sighs> Yo. I don't know. If I hope this is hitting you like it hit me because I was just like, I was like, that's what I've been missing is just the understanding that it, I don't have to sit there and be like, Lord, I rejoice in you. And therefore, like, I'm, you know, made happy. And, you know, I have your spirit. So, um, you know, the joy and the patience and the diligence are there. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to sit there and read aloud scripture to fight the devil when I sit there and read aloud scripture, it builds my spirit man up and it reminds me of the truth and it refreshes my mind, it renews my spirit. But we already won. And it's easier to say that, you know? And one of the things that the dude said, um, not the dude, this grown man named Chad Johnson, 
um, was that there's this common thing in the church where people will be like, you have your white dog and your black dog and, you know, it's this, the spirit and the flesh and whoever you feed more is going to win. So if you're like feeding your flesh, feeding your flesh, your flesh is going to win. Well, that contradicts the idea that our flesh is literally dead. So we can't feed something that's already dead. It's just us coming into agreement with the lies of the enemy that is keeping us stuck in this place where we're like, oh, I just fed my flesh a lot this week and that's why I, you know, was up there sinning a lot. No, no, no. It is not our works at all. It is only God's grace that keeps us free and it is all God. And Romans 6 really shows that we need to come into agreement with his word, expect freedom, and thank him for it. So like when you put your kid on the ledge and he goes, thank you, dad, for catching me, and just goes for it. That's what we need to do. And let me tell you, it was so emotional listening to this man's story because he said it was just in the car one day when a wave came at him. And you know, if you're um, sensitive to the spirit or something, you can feel when that pressure comes on, when that darkness is coming. He said when it came, he's, instead of trying to get into warrior mode, you know, which there's a time and a place, do not get me wrong, but he just started praising God for the sacrifice that God made through Jesus's finished work on the cross. And he literally said the temptation fled and it lifted. And that was the first time it had ever happened. And I, I, my eyes just watered and I just got so emotional over that because that is true freedom and true revelation that that man just came to. Just amazing, y'all. So... I'm going to finish with this car analogy that they also gave in this video. And please don't think that I'm, um, you know, oh, you know, she gave examples from the video. So that's good. I'm not going to go back and watch it. Please go back and watch it because even my, me repeating these analogies and examples they're giving does not do them justice. So Chad Johnson said, what he thought originally was that when you um, are saved, you come to God and you have like, you have a broken down car as your body, right? As your soul and all that. And then God, through the process of sanctification, he will over time, you know, pop out the dents, replace the windshield, you know, give you some upgrades. And over time you get to be this new car and you're like running smoothly and you're looking cool. But what actually happens is when we get baptized, when we give our lives to Christ, when our flesh dies with him on that cross, God gives us a brand new car and we don't deserve it. We didn't do anything to get it, but he gives it to us. And all he's telling us is say, you know, be thankful. When you're thank being thankful, you're coming into an agreement. You're acknowledging the truth, the reality of the situation, and then just go, you know, use it, use this new vehicle and don't sit there and pretend like you're still in this beat up old car when you're literally not. Because when you do come into agreement with that lie, that's when the enemy gets a foothold, boys. Oh my gosh. <sighs> y'all, I really hope that this has given y'all some good revelation. And, you know, if you're farther along, I mean, this dude was 34 and had been walking with Christ for years and years and years. And God, for his glory, waited until he maxed out on every other option before giving him him this revelation i just praise god and thank him that through this man's struggle and his ability to share his story i am now given that revelation 
so much sooner because I really hadn't realized how entrapping and frustrating getting in these cycles of heaviness and depression and, you know, unproductivity was for me. And during those little down cycles, I would start accepting all these lies. And the other day I was sitting there in my journal and writing out all these goals that I had for myself and just feeling like, you know, in the middle of that downward rut and just feeling like I have so much to do, so much that I want to improve on. And it's just like, it felt impossible. And then something told my spirit, okay, write down what goals that you already have accomplished. And I started writing them down and I was like, wait, whoa, I've changed so much. I've introduced so many new habits that have actually become positive habits in my life through the power and grace of the Holy Spirit. And here I am, I'm wallowing a little bit and completely forgot that I had done any of those things. So yeah, that's my little story on that. I was just blown away by this revelation and it just solidified my love of diving into the word and just really really figuring out what spiritual laws are we playing with here because it's kind of hard to tell because they're not visible and the devil wants to keep everything a deception and the last thing i'm gonna add is that tiffany buckner recently did a video and you know what it was on the root of bitterness and let me tell you this is kind of this kind of applies to a lot of videos that i kind of pass by Whenever I look at a video and I'm like, yeah, I don't think that, that one's for me. It 100% is for me. And not even because I struggle with bitterness because thank God, you know, thank God, thank God, thank God. I have overcome that, um, you know. And of course, forgiveness in itself is a process that's kind of like an onion in my case at least. And so, you know, things do get revealed and I deal with them on the spot because nobody has time for bitterness. And God's grace has definitely kept me because I personally have not, you know, struggled with jealousy. So I just thought this video isn't for me. But what she said at one point in the video was that there was a study done, I forget, where it was from, so sorry, this is not very, um, this is kind of a last minute add-in that I just randomly decided to say, but we have like 15 to 60,000, or 20 to 60,000 thoughts a day, and 80% of it, 80% of our thoughts are negative, and 95% of our thoughts are repetitive. So if that tells you anything, the devil loves to play with the mind like that's his first point of attack is the mind and i wasn't getting that you know i really was not understanding how important being mindful of our thoughts and you know how if i let the enemy's lies fester even for a little bit they just slip past and of course it's impossible to get every one of them but just staying open and you know praying that god makes us ready to be shown our areas of weakness that's the key y'all it's definitely the key and i just feel so 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 blessed that god has revealed this to me and i have a deeper level of walking in deliverance and you know that's an ongoing process there's the original deliverance you know the big one where you get rid of those demons get rid of those strongholds then there's like the emotional level of deliverance where you're fixing and cleansing your mind with the word of god and hearing his voice and then there's walking it out through revelation and truth and just you know i'm not like a the theological person very much you know but 
I really think that the phrase dying to yourself needs a little bit of updating because it's just the posture of gratitude towards the fact that we already died. You know, it's, it's an intentional agreement that we come into every morning. Okay, we already died, but it's not an action that I do every morning that kills my flesh or that keeps my flesh at bay. No, the flesh is dead. And that is the biggest, mainest, <laughs> ending on a great note, obviously, making up words. So it's time for me to go get some water. I love you guys. Bye.